everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Deep Thoughts. And today, we are talking about Attack on Titan Season 3, Part 2, Episode 9. Without further ado, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into this thing, and let's go ahead and start with uh, just a fun little aside. So, just as a reminder, it took Grisha explaining the ocean for me to realize that this thing that the show has been talking about forever that we were, like, that our two characters were standing at the edge of it. This important thing, the ocean. It took me, it took Grisha explaining what the ocean was for me to be like, oh shit, we were at the ocean this whole time, and I, like, but that's because there's been so much cr madness and craziness going on the last couple episodes that it didn't even sink in to me that like we were looking at the ocean the only thing that would have made it better is if armin was there although he is name dropped which is something we will get to later but yeah we were at the ocean folks and none of us even realized because there's much more pressing matters going on right now one of which being we learned kruger's name aaron kruger aaron on one hand, I was like, oh, that's nice, but on the other hand, I'm like, oh my god, Aaron is named after Kruger, the owl, the man who set, who, who essentially helped set Grisha on this path, although Kruger wasn't the one who, like, began the path. Kruger just gave Grisha a gentle nudge out the door, and good for you if you caught that reference. And I, I gotta say, one of probably the, the best things about this episode it, aside from the lore that we learned, and, and the last few episodes have been like lore heavy, but like allow me just to, and, and they've all been great, but I, I want to specifically point out the dialogue in this episode. I never want to hear, this, this whole this whole second part of this season, I never want to hear any, like any anybody saying like, oh, the characters aren't that deep, or like, oh, the dialogue's clunky, or like all it is is spectacle, because that ain't true anymore. That may have been true of season one. It may have been a bit of a soap opera and have nothing but spectacle, but as the show goes on, as the series goes on, it gets, it touches on these incredible themes and it really fleshes out its characters in a way that is genuinely shocking for anybody who, like myself back in season one, just assumed it was nothing but spectacle. I feel kind of silly now when I look back on that because it's like, that's just not the case. And that is exemplified in the scene between Grisha and Kruger. The Grisha and Kruger conversation takes place over the course of the episode through flashbacks with Aaron, um, basically reliving, sort of, not even reliving, just sort of getting glimpses into this conversation that he was not part of. But it's interesting because when you look at it, it's really just two broken, hateful men sitting at the edge of the world talking about how they're going to pay for their sins. Little lines of dialogue here, like like Kruger pointing out, the only truth of this world is that there is no truth. Or Grisha's line of, all I have left are my sins, to which Kruger replies, that's more than enough. It's just wild to me. Like the fact, like especially the, the line of the only truth in this world is that there is no truth. It's something that was hinted in the previous episode that they really come out to the forefront and say in this episode is that a lot of history is written by the winners and nothing is exactly true. Once you hear, once you hear a story, things will be changed from the truth. Nothing, the, there is no real truth which is really fascinating. And there's just something about these two men who have committed incredible sins and who have fallen so far from their goals, just sitting at the edge of the world, quote unquote, like sitting by the ocean, just talking about how they can maybe save everyone else despite how far that they've fallen. And it's it's funny, it, it, it's like echoes of, of Irwin in a way. Just like, I've fallen so far in pursuit of a goal. Only, Erwin, at the very least, like, still was good at heart. Like, he had, his, like, but all three of these men had their heart in the right place. But I don't know if Erwin, if I can really say that Erwin goes... Actually, no, they're all pretty... Their souls are blackened. And it's just, it's just interesting to see these complicated characters because they are... Like, someone like Erwin is heroic, but has caused the death of so many people. People who believed in him. And then you have someone like Kruger, who set out to save, El uh, El like, bring back Eldia, 
but in doing so had to send Eldians to their death, become titans and kick them off a wall. You have Grisha, who was so dead set on avenging his sister that it cost him everything. It's just, it's, and it's, it's all just through dialogue sitting on top of a, of, of a wall. And it's just so well done. But enough about that scene, I'm sorry. I just, I love dialogue, I'm a big dialogue guy. Dialogue and symbolism, that's chiefly my stuff when it comes to storytelling. However, comma, uh, <laughs> I gotta point out some of the lore in this episode because it gets crazy. So my son Armin, my precious boy who I had thought had escaped death, has 13 years left. My, my boy is running on borrowed time. And it's even worse for Aaron, the legend that is Aaron Yeager, only gets eight years left to go, my God. And Kruger, by the time we last see him, he's on his like last couple like minutes. Like it's just, it's sad. So the power of the Titan, it, it, it will slowly wear you down. The curse of Ymir gives you 13 years to go after that. You're essentially running on borrowed time for that power, which is really, really interesting. Likewise, the idea that the subjects of Ymir are all bound together is really fascinating. So just the idea that like, if say Armin doesn't pass his uh, Titan power to someone else, then somebody, then the child of some other subject of Ymir, that that child will be born with the power that Armin wasn't able to pass down. That is wild. So they're connected by some by the hands of fate. And I'm getting, and, and I know this isn't gonna be quite right, but just bear with me. I got some sort of like life stream vibes from Final Fantasy VII mixed with some really trippy, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. It, it's, it's sort of hard to pin down, but it, it's really, it, it's weird because it does remind me of stuff like the life stream or like the way time travel works and stuff like Doctor Who but it's not really time travel and it's not really the live stream either. It's sort of its own thing. It's, it's the idea of like one long story, one long arc, like passed from person to person to person. It's almost sort of like, and keep in mind, I don't watch this show uh, or I, rather I've never seen this show, but I'm vaguely aware of how the mechanics of said show works. It's sort of like the Avatar from Avatar's, uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, where like these characters like can almost like get glimpses into the past. You can't really, it's, it's not like Aaron can like meditate and talk to his dad and, and Kruger or anything like that, or talk to like future versions of himself or anything. It's just that he can get glimpses into the past through the people who are connected to uh, to who uh, people who have become Titans, people who are connected to the subjects of Ymir. It's, really wild. <laughs> and of course, that also comes up back again with Kruger and Grisha in that scene where Kruger tells him like, you have to find love inside those walls because otherwise it all just repeats. Otherwise it's just hate and, and the, it's just, otherwise it's just hate and war and the whole cycle repeats. You need to form a family to save Mikasa and Armin and like see through it all. And Grisha has this moment of like, Mikasa and Armin, who the hell is that? And I was like, um, excuse me, what? And for like a split second, I was like, is Kruger Aaron? Like, is, huh? But then even, even Kruger says like, huh, what? Oh, whose memories were that? Wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. But it's not time travel. <laughs> That's what's just... Ah, Isayama, you absolute genius. You absolute mad lad, to quote a friend of mine. Oh my God. I thought I, I thought season one of Attack, like I remember thinking like season one of Attack on Titan is the height. It's never gonna top that. How have we gone this long with Titan and I'm still getting shook? And from what I gather from friends of mine who have read the manga, it's only gonna get crazier. Well, I actually do have one more quick thing to say, and that being the Ymir and Historia ship is continuing to sail. That romance going strong as ever. I, I, I just want them to meet up one more time. And with that said, everybody, that is gonna wrap up my thoughts on today's video, uh, today's video, today's episode. Overall, I'd have to give this episode a really strong A. Very close to an A plus. 
I just couldn't, just something about it, I couldn't quite give it the A+, but damn, it is close. And with that said, everybody, if you enjoyed today's video, then by all means, hitting that like button and sharing this video around on the internet, well, that would be super rad of you. And if you would like to stick around and check out more from me, then by all means, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to join the good ones. And as always, before we close out a video, we gotta give a big, big shout out to the good folks over on Patreon, namely those in the Earl Grey tier, Dominic, Urza, No For Nothing, Maria Teresa, Omner Garamond, Opinionated Slime, Shadow Creative, Sipco Games, Tristan, and Veridin. Thank you all so much for your continued support. If you too would like to help me keep this channel running, by all means go ahead and check out the Patreon link in the description. For as little as a dollar a month, you could help out this channel big time. I would really appreciate it if you guys could check it out. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. With all that said though, guys, until our next meeting, you stay rad and don't scary. <laughs>